moved to Cedar Island when I was a kid of about six years old, and I started the school there at Cedar Island. I was going to school in the first grade, and uh, I went to school there until uh, the school discontinued up in the 40s. We would start at the first grade and we'd go up to about the eighth grade, something like that. When I was going there, they may have went higher maybe at one time, but when I was going there, about the eighth or ninth. I lived in the flats. So we, we were separate, segregated during that time of my early youth, but, but the whites and the blacks and coochies lived on the same side of the track, and we would boast about that because all our families worked. Uh, the black families and the white families that worked together were pretty close. My family worked with the Allens, the uh, Baldy Allen family and the George Allen family and so forth. It was like that. And, and all the ones in the flats, when it was flood, we'd have to swim towards the school. I was uh, born and raised at home, Davis Prairie community, which used to have a little country school. And I was born in 1934. I remember going to school at this little schoolhouse and I went to the second grade, third grade I believe when we went into Thorn. And we got off the bus and I looked at that big school and it had these pillars, you know, and there and I said, man, I'll get lost in this thing, you know. The postmaster at Prairie Hill at that time uh, had a, a man named John Riley, I think, and, and he had a niece and her name was Miss Delia Copeland. So, uh, he submitted her name as the post office when, when I, don't, I don't think she ever lived there, but it's kind of interesting that Delia was named her after this postmaster's niece back in those days. And see, when Delia, I don't know what year it was that Delia lost its school. I don't have a clue, but they consolidated uh, with Prairie Hill. My brother started out going to school at the Delia school which was, uh, say, a good city block from our house. Uh, then, when they lost the school, he started going to uh, Prairie Hill. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many years that he went to Prairie Hill. But when I started the school, I only went to Coolidge. Uh, my father uh, bought a home on 313 Sumter Street when I was two years old. I'm now 92. So that's been a while. I'll be 92 in September. So that's been a while ago, but we uh, grew up there and in that neighborhood there were a lot of children. On the other side of us was Mahaya's first school building. And my sister and her husband bought that old school building and tore it down and built a new home. The home's still standing there now. But uh, we all enjoyed living on Sumter Street. No one, no kind of business there. It was just a church. Just a church? How many churches were there at the time? We were number one, we were up there. We were up there, the one that's still there? Uh, the one that's still there. One, yeah. also, that's the only one I remember. Is it still the same building? Yeah, same building. Same building? Yeah. Not all of them, it's been added. It was, a, it was just a little long shot in one church. Yes, ma'am. Because they added, they fixed it bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and did they have like socials at the church? And, and is that where everybody oh, yeah, kind of uh -huh, met? Yeah, uh -huh. and, and everybody in the community pretty much went to the same church? Same church, uh -huh. yeah. When the consolidation happened, it was Independence, Barnett Prairie, Center Point, Mount Joy, and Old Union. So it made a very nice school and we had a beautiful building with a huge auditorium. And that auditorium was the center of social life there. We had uh, Stamps Baxter quartets, religious quartets come and spend the day and sing all day and have lunch. We had uh, meetings there. The ladies would meet there and the county extension agent would come and demonstrate all kinds of recipes and uh, clothing and sewing. And the women at Olitha were always striving to be better. 
The Moss Spring community got its name from the Moss family who settled in Limestone County in the early 1800s. And the Moss Springs community is also where Bob Wills was born. My, my great grandmother had property that backed up to the Moss property. And my grandfather was about 16 years old when Bob Wills was just four or five years old. His family, Bob Wills' family, they were sharecroppers also, and they lived about a half a mile from my grandfather. I attended, started school at the Fair Oaks Elementary School in 1938. Uh, I went through the elementary school, graduated from high school in May of 1949. Fair Oaks High School, it was uh, a consolidated school it consolidated in 1935 from with the communities of New Hope, Farrah, Lost Prairie, Personville, and the existing Oak School. And uh, that lasted for many years and through 1958. The school is located where the present church is, now Sandy Church, where the cemetery is. That's, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the school there. Did you, did you stay at Oak Hill? The whole time I stayed at Oak Hill until you know it. Uh, I believe up until the uh, seventh grade, and that was as far as it went under my uh, enrollment. Because now at one time it went up to the twelfth. There were kids that graduated from the twelfth grade, but when my generation this. Uh, new law, integration laws will begin to come in, mm -hmm. so it only went to a certain level, grade level, and you had to move. And I left Oak Hill and went to Wood, I mean Elko School, and I stayed there two years to the 10th uh, grade level, and I left there and I went to Woodland, 10th uh, through the uh, 11th grade in my final year of the country between those two schools since I was in the Coolidge district. Coolidge mandated me back to their district, so my final year was in, 12th grade year was in Coolidge. We lived in a house about a half block from the main street of Coolidge. At that time there was four main blocks and every building in town was, was full of people there. And every Saturday the town would just be loaded with wagons and the ones I can I remember it always fascinated me it was the family there that came to town about four miles from town in an ox cart. First time I'd ever seen an ox cart and that was kind of an interesting thing seeing these people, you know, basically the kids be riding in the cart and then the father be leading the oxen into town. But that was a fascinating thing. The building has so much difference. The engineering in the thing is just tremendous. It's uh, the stone that it's in it was mined right there on the hill. And the limestone, I've had engineers look at it, and it's not regular limestone, because regular limestone will wear, but this particular limestone there has granite in it, and they've told me it's good for another 100 years. Frozen wasn't a town, it was just a little community. All that was in the town of Frozen was two grocery stores, and what we called a beer joint. The school building itself was a huge building and it was used for church too. It didn't make any difference what preacher, whether it was Baptist, Methodist, Assembly of God, if they wanted to come and preach, we went and listened because there was nothing else to do in, in the Frosa area. The school had um, three teachers. The schools, the school rooms were were big rooms. They had huge big old pot-bellied stoves and the high school boys along with Mr. Sims would have to bring the wood in for the teachers. But it was the teachers jobs to start the fires in the mornings. Oh I don't know what year but none of the kids that I went to school with graduated from Rosa School because it consolidated with Grosbeck and uh, so that everybody had to go either to Grosbeck or Prairie Hill to uh, graduate.